Hey folks, my name's Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And a couple of weeks ago I made a Haunter sculpture and asked the question, if the Venom symbiote invaded the world of Pokemon, what would it choose as its host? Pikachu. It would choose Pikachu. Why? Because I haven't made Pikachu yet. Now the first step is going to be making a rough Pikachu body. Fortunately, Pikachu is about 98% yellow chonk, so I don't really need to worry about an armature. Instead, I'm going to bulk out his body using aluminium foil wrapped in clay. The foil center helps keep the overall weight down and means I'm not wasting expensive clay building up a body. And once I've got that crunchy interior wrapped in a soft exterior shell, I can start adding to the overall shape, starting with his little stumpy legs before adding his big bulbous head. Because it's a venomized Pikachu, or a venom chew, if you will, I'm going to exaggerate some of his limbs so that I can give him a bit more of a menacing pose. I'm going to be giving him the big venom screamy mouth, but I want to try and retain some of Pikachu's shape in his face, since apart from his tail and ears, it's pretty easy to lose the Pikachu and just end up with a very oddly shaped symbiote. Otherwise, I'll mark out where I want the mouth and eyes to be before committing and chopping out my Pac-Man mouth. Now Venom's got a pretty pronounced underbite, so I want to build up his lower jaw before refining the shape of his mouth. And with his mouth finished, I'll get the shape of his forehead and upper jaw sorted out before retracing where his big spooky eyes will go. I wanted to try and keep Pikachu's trademark cheek circles somewhat intact, so I'm going to make Venom Chew's gnarly Joker smile a little bit bigger. Then I'll add a long, thin, wormy dealy inside the mouth to act as his gums before I get started on his teeth. My plan was to make his teeth using some of this translucent clay since it looks pretty good as is, and I figured it would lend itself well to teeth. However, like most of my plans, it went tits up pretty fast, and I ended up accidentally covering them in paint anyways, so I guess the moral of the story is planning is stupid and you should just make it up as you go along. Then all these TCs get stabbed into the gums at random. Venom's got what we like to call summer teeth, so don't worry too much about how some are shorter and some are longer, since the messier the better. Now he's looking a bit too smooth and I want my Venom Chew to be all veiny and gnarly, so I'll add a bit of surface texture by popping some little wormy dealies all over the skin and then blending them in. Finally, before he goes into the oven for his first bake, I'll stick some old school antennae into the back of his head so that I can build up his ears afterwards. And then of course these get the same veiny treatment as the rest of the head. Now Pikachu's got some pretty tiny arms, whereas Venom's got these massive tree trunks for arms, so I wanted to find a middle ground. I figured the symbiote's going to increase Pikachu's physical strength quite drastically, but not his actual body shape, so I'll stick with the little arms, but make them comically muscular. Now he's also really rocking that come at me bro stance, and I want to buff up his torso a bit as well, so he's going to get some tiny yet powerful pecs. Then it's into the oven for another bake, and I can get started on his hands. His hands start out as little hand burgers that get smooshed onto his forearm stump, and then little hot dogs get smooshed into preformed hot dog holes. These then get blended in, and I'll add a bit of shape to the fingers and knuckles before poking holes into the tips of my hot dogs to add some tiny claws. His tail starts as a length of wire that gets bent into a lightning bolt shape and then covered in clay. Then I'll add some texture to the tail with my shaping tool before adding more of those ever-present veins. 
Finally, his feet undergo pretty much the same process as the hands, but without the hot dogs for fingers. Instead, I'll poke some holes and stick the claws straight in, refining the shape of the toe afterwards. And then just like the arms, I'll greatly exaggerate the muscles of the legs so Venom Chew is left with some big, gnarly, never misses leg day legs. And then of course they get covered in more veins just like everything else. His tongue starts out as a ball that gets rolled into a wormy dealy, textured, and then jammed into his mouth. There's not much to it, but it just wouldn't be Venom without a Gene Simmons tongue. Now I'd originally wanted to make this model as Venom fighting Carnage, except it's Venom Chew versus Carnage Eevee or some other kind of Pokemon, but I decided to focus on just making Venom Chew. Now to make up for the lack of a Carnage cat, I figured I'd make some of Venom's extra appendages that end in more faces. Uh, except obviously, it's just more Venom Chew faces. To mount them, I'll anchor some wire into his back and then bend the wire into appropriately appendage shapes. Then these can get clipped down to size. And then I can glue the heads onto the tips before coating the wires in a layer of clay. Now after my final bake, I sat back and decided that his teeth were a bit too thin and small, so I ended up pulling them all out, cutting his gums off, then replacing them with bigger and thicker teeth. Now I'm much happier with these guys, which means that, much like a Rolling Stone, it's time to paint it black. I wanted his tongue to be a deep red, so naturally I started by painting it pretty much orange because I'm not so good with the colors. Then I can get to work on the three sets of eyes which all get painted a nice thick white. Now as you can probably see, I did in fact go ham with the red and seriously overpainted the teeth, but instead of cleaning them off, I'm just going to repaint them all with a nice bone white before doing the same thing to the claws. And then a little bit of brown wash towards the nail bed will help give a bit of coloration as well. Finally, I tried to figure out what kind of symbol to give him on his chest, but couldn't think of any good alternatives to the symbiote spider, and lacking any creativity at this point, I just went ahead and gave him the spider. Then I painted the little white squares onto the back of his hands before deciding that he needed some final highlights, so I went back to the 90s and gave him some frosted tips. Finally, to give the whole thing a nice slimy appearance, I'll coat the entire body in a nice shiny gloss varnish. So Venom Chew is all but finished, however he's not super stable so I need to make some kind of base for him to stand on. Normally I'd make it out of foam or some such, but I want to make some more black goo out of clay, and I don't want lung cancer, so I'm going to be making some rocks out of clay. Once I've got my clay flattened and cut to size, I'll mark out where Venom Chew stands and then mark out the individual rocks. Then it's just a case of cutting, smashing, squishing, and shaping until I've got a rocky looking hamburger patty. And it's into the oven to cure. And I can give it a quick painting. I'll start by painting my gray rock gray. Why paint the gray gray? Because I want to add some of my Bon Ma Mom Black Cherry Wash. But it's thin and won't adhere to the clay very well. So in order to get that tasty washed effect, I need a base coat that will accept the stain. Otherwise, once it's been applied and any excess has been dabbed off, I can start sharpening the edges by using progressively lighter dry brushes. And that is how you make a pretty damn good looking Goron Burger out of clay. And the only thing I need to do is make some of the aforementioned Venom goo. I'm using black clay here so that when I paint it the same color as Venom Chew, if I miss any parts, they won't be as noticeable. 
Whereas if I use the usual gray clay, it'll be a lot harder to hide. I could of course just do a good job painting it, but that's not really what I do on this channel. Finally, a quick coat of gloss varnish to make it shiny and I'm ready to glue my pocket monster in place. Pika, Pikachu. And the absolute last step is going to be giving Venom Chew a little bit of tongue goo. This is Fabri-Tac, which is a fancy glue that I use mostly for adding stupid stuff like this to models. Because it's stringy but it dries clear, it works really well for things like Venom Saliva. But with that finished, we are on to our glamour shops. There you have it folks, I hope you enjoyed this one, as it really is the crossover that no one asked for. Now if I were to do a Carnage version to fight Venom Chew, what Pokemon should be the host? Let me know down below. Otherwise, if you're new here, consider hitting that little subscription button and leaving me a like, or a dislike, since that doesn't really seem to matter anymore. Of course, if you'd like to go that little step further and want to help support the channel, then head on over to Patreon. Speaking of which, I'd like to thank the wonderful people that make this channel possible with a big shout out to my newest patrons. Firestar5318 of Farland, Gemma Bizet, Brennan, Richard Driard, Cole McCalman, Jesse Lantain, Aza Elander, Sarah Posderek Chenevi, Spraken, and Zvibo. You are the unwilling host of my Black Goose symbiote. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>